In addition to the lettering on the hood that reads Greendale on both sides, there was other lettering on the engine as well when it was new in 1938. You can see here behind me the word, words public safety. Farther down near the back it reads Greendale Fire Department. And then over my shoulder here there's a number 40 that indicates uh, that this was uh, engine 40. Uh, not that we had 40 engines, but in the uh, in the Milwaukee County area today anyway, uh, each station will be designated a number uh, system. Like here in Greendale, four, all the numbers start with four or 40, uh, 41, 43, that sort of thing. So in 1938, it was engine 40, just being the first engine. Now, the lettering that was put on here originally probably was hand painted and it would be in a gold color or, a, or kind of a deep yellow with a black drop shadow, exactly how I have it on here. Uh, this lettering here, uh, the public safety, the Green Fire Department down there, and the number 40, uh, these are actually vinyl decals or stickers, if you will. Uh, what I did is I took the original photographs, I redrew the lettering on the computer to match exactly what was in the photograph, and then had the vinyl decals made, and then I installed them uh, some time ago. Uh, they're basically just temporary. If we ever get the engine repainted completely, uh, redone, you know, restored in that manner, uh, all this lettering, the vinyl lettering would be gone and we'd have to redo the lettering. Uh, we could do it like it was done originally, hand painted. I'm assuming it was hand painted. Uh, there is another process uh, that we could use and it certainly was available in 1938, would be water transfer decals. Um, maybe as a kid you built a model of a car or an airplane or something and to put stickers on there, you, you could have put stickers but typically what they would do with models would be a water transfer decal. You take the decal, you soak it in warm water and then you slide it off onto your model and then it kind of permanently glues it on there. That's, that would probably be the way to do it uh, when we restore the engine. Uh, hand painting would be very expensive to do that and I don't uh, believe we would be able to go to the, the cost of, of having all the lettering repainted in that manner. Also, uh, what I derived from the original photographs was the placement and the size of all the lettering. Uh, if you can you see here how I did that, um, I took the photographs and I made lines, uh, horizontal and vertical lines uh, to line up with various things on the engine already. Uh, so if you look in the photograph, it might line up with a, a certain valve or a bolt or something like that. And I was able to do that on the current engine as well, so that everything is the correct size and the exact placement it was originally in 1938. So this is kind of a, a in the meantime measure, if you will. Uh, I don't know if, if and when we'll ever get the engine repainted, um, but in the meantime, I put these on just to give the look of it uh, so that it has more of the feel uh, of what it really was like in 1938 to have that particular lettering on there. In addition to the lettering uh, that was on the engine, there was also pinstriping. If you, if you look at this pinstriping here, this was done uh, in the 1980s. This is not the original pinstriping. And to be quite honest, it wasn't done very well. Um, I, I, of course, it's wore, wearing off over the years here now. But uh, the painting of it wasn't very straight or uniform. Um, so it, it would have been done a little differently than this, uh, professionally, of course, originally. And then uh, the pattern would have been a little different as well. There would have been a gold or a yellow uh, painting here, and then next to it would have been a thin white line. And we don't see that thin white line here, but we do see it in another spot on the engine. There would have also been pinstriping along the wheel well on the fender and then along the bottom part here. Uh, this is the 1980s recreation of that, and you can actually see they did have a, a main line here painted gold with black on either side and then a slight white line here. You can see just a very faint uh, shadow of one there. So it kind of recreated what was there, the two lines uh, of the pinstriping. Also in the corner here, there would have been a, a kind of a fancy scroll work. And uh, there are other portions uh, of the engine that also would have had that same kind or very similar kind of scroll work. You can see here and uh, these other spots where there was that kind of uh, scroll work. Now again, uh, that could have been hand painted or it could have been a water transfer decal. To me, it would be much easier to make, to design it on a computer as a water transfer decal and then just have copies made so that it can be put on in the various portions and parts of the engine that would have had that uh, scroll work. 
There would have also been other scroll work uh, on the engine. If you look on the front fender, uh, it had the pinstriping and then the center and the front would have been uh, some scroll work as well. Also back here, there was an original uh, fancy scroll work design on this corner. So the pinstriping would come down, end at the scroll work and then continue on uh, horizontally towards the back of the engine. To make it similar to what was on the front fender, I believe there was also a scroll work in the center of both the front and the rear of the rear wheel wells. So the pinstriping would be around the wheel well and in the center would be kind of a more of a uh, pointy triangular uh, design for the scroll work in that area. You may be wondering how will I recreate the pinstriping and the scroll work to look exactly as it did in 1938. If you look at all the original photographs, first of all they're in black and white. Uh, sometimes, sometimes difficult to discern colors. Um, sometimes it's obvious, a red truck, you know, you can kind of tell that sort of thing. But the detailed colors of the scroll work and pinstriping are nearly impossible to tell in a black and white photo. Also, even the best photos we have, if you zoom in on them, you will not see the detail that is needed to recreate the scroll work and the pinstriping as well on the computer. But there is hope. I discovered online a fire engine that was built by Howe in 1936 and uh, it looks uh, to be in original paint with original pinstriping and original scroll work. The engine is in Indiana. I have discovered uh, uh, the location of where it is and um, I will make arrangements uh, soon perhaps uh, sometime this year, uh, to travel to, to the town where the truck is located and take some very detailed photographs uh, so that I can recreate all of the elements of the pinstriping and the scroll work. So that's a project uh, for the future, but uh, it, it can be done and uh, I will certainly uh, pursue it uh, as, uh, as best as I can. I recently took a trip down to Dillsboro, Indiana. That is where this original fire engine is. It's got the original paint, original pinstriping, original scroll work. It's a 1936 Chevrolet, but it was built by Howell, the same company that built our Diamond T. And if you look at the original lettering on our engine, uh, I believe it was hand painted. If you look at the original lettering on this Dillsboro engine, it is hand painted. So I would like to do it hand painted. It might be more expensive that way. We'll, we'll see how it goes. The engine also has the original pinstriping. If you look at our engine, uh, originally it had a lot of pinstriping and a lot of different areas. Uh, I could tell it was two, two kind of layers. They have the original pinstriping. I was actually able to take good photos of it, get some measurements, so I know exactly the kind of pinstriping it was. Our 1938 Diamond T had a lot of scroll work in different areas. That's the best photo we have of it right there. Can't do anything with it. There. In Indiana, it has the original scroll work. I took a lot of detailed photos of the scroll work. I can reproduce that on the computer. They even had, uh, you see the scroll work we had on the front fender and the rear fenders. They have that same scroll work on their rear fender, but it's exactly the same kind that would be on there. Now on the back of the engine, uh, you can see around the word how there. There is some more scroll work in pinstriping. We don't have that on ours. I don't have any original photos of our engine, so I did not even know that was in existence. But uh, there's a more current photo. I will have to also recreate this pinstriping and this scroll work. This scroll work almost looks a little more faded though than the other, uh, other scroll work. I don't know if it was a kind of a white and black color or if it was the multicolors of the other scroll work, but I'll certainly do more research on that. So it was actually a very successful trip to Dillsboro, Indiana.